Chicago is known for its iconic skyline and as the birthplace of the skyscraper, but little is known about how these architectural masterpieces affect the weather. To find out, a group of Argonne scientists, along with university researchers, students, and community groups, spent two weeks collecting never-before-seen weather data from urban canyons in downtown Chicago. Wait, canyons in Chicago? Chicago is an urban canyon. It's a massive. You actually look at the whole downtown area from Streeterville down to, um, area, down to South Loop, uh, full of urban canyons. Scott Collis manages Argonne's Crocus, or Community Research on Climate and Urban Science team. An urban canyon is an area in the city with tall buildings where the buildings are much taller than the distance between them. These urban canyons, they're not represented in climate simulations or even weather simulations. So we don't know what influence they have on the weather around them. The group studied a shallow urban canyon that stretches east on Roosevelt Road from the UIC campus to the shed and a deeper one in the financial district. The overall goal is to see how the city skyline affects the weather and vice versa. Roger that, we'll be heading your way momentarily. We were with them when this group of researchers first set out on foot near the lakefront. Using portable weather stations, they measured the temperature, wind direction, and other weather variables, both in the sun and the shade. Here we're comparing how it changes between shaded pavement and um, sun-exposed pavements. You have to take a measurement on the shaded pavement, you got 22 degrees Celsius, and move that over to this, uh, the sunny pavement, you got a 25 degrees Celsius, so about two degree difference. Before heading over to the Shedd Aquarium, they started taking their weather measurements at Michigan Avenue and Roosevelt Road. We picked that avenue because our computer simulations have shown that's where we expect the biggest influence of the urban canyon. Collis says urban canyons can do a variety of things, like reducing wind speed. What we don't know is the impact on something called, is called atmospheric turbulence. We don't know how choppy it makes the atmosphere. You know when you're kind of landing in an O'Hare, you get below a certain altitude and all of a sudden seatbelt sign comes on and the plane's rocking around. After they finished their ground measurements, these researchers took their eyes to the skies. Two, one, lift off. The Gary Comer Education Campus on the south side is one of three locations where the research team released heat balloons to gather more weather data, this time outside of an urban canyon. The small digital devices in the biodegradable cups attached to party balloons captured weather conditions and sent that information back to the team on the ground. Next up. And then this is the high spectral resolution LIDAR, or HSRL, and it shoots a big green laser beam into the sky and it measures pollution. Tim Wagner is a weather researcher from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He's assisting Argonne's urban canyon research by working in a high-tech mobile meteorology lab, using this laser to gather microscopic data. And it's actually capturing a layer of smoke that has been over the city. This, this smoke, it is uh, too thin for us to see with the naked eye, but we can pick it up with our instruments. As the group finished its two-week data collection project, we caught up with lead researcher Scott Collis one more time for a sneak peek at the initial results. One thing we're also seeing is the role in which the green spaces in and around the urban canyon are having in cooling off the worst impacts of the heat. That's an issue Naomi Davis is all too familiar with. Well, there is the 1995 tragedy of 736 heat-related deaths in the city of Chicago, and the understanding that already compromised health conditions are exacerbated by heat in ways that can and have proven fatal. Davis is the founder and CEO of Blacks and Green. It's one of several community groups partnering with Argonne in its urban canyon field research. She's hoping it will lead to more trees and green spaces on the south side to help black and brown communities withstand the effects of climate change. We know that we have homes that uh, where residents don't afford or don't use air conditioning. Um, we, we understand that there are issues of pollution in our neighborhoods that are disproportionate. Davis says the area around 64th and Cottage is a good example of what's called a heat island, where the temperature outside gets hotter because there are few, if any, trees in the green space. Collis says trees are important because they literally sweat 
and make the air cooler through a process called evaporative cooling. Before Collis and his team can try to answer any questions about heat islands, urban canyons, or Chicago weather, they have an avalanche of data to analyze. All in the name of not only making weather more predictable, but improving our understanding of a city like Chicago. Our climbers assume Chicago is the same. There's no difference between Humboldt Park. There's no difference between Westwood Lawn or downtown Chicago. Crocus is collecting the data to represent Chicago.